Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. New at noon, authorities in Aiken County, Minnesota, believe a body found there is likely a missing woman. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreer. Authorities believe the body is 35-year-old Michelle May. She has been missing since October 3rd. The body was found on private property near Swartara. Now, that's a town just northeast of Brainerd. The body is now undergoing an autopsy. May is from Outing, Minnesota, which is about 17 miles from where she was found. Also new for you at noon, a 35-year-old Fargo man is lucky to be alive after falling asleep at the wheel and ending up in the river. Troopers say 35-year-old Darren Paulson was traveling southbound on I-29 when he fell asleep, lost control of his vehicle, drove through a cable median barrier, and then landed facing south with his vehicle fully submerged in the river. Now this is a picture and you see just a sliver of that vehicle sticking out. Paulson was rescued from his vehicle, and that car was then towed from the scene. Authorities say that he was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. Taking that live look outside right now, it's a sight we see way too often this fall. Gray skies, clouds. Will we ever see the sun around here? For a check of our forecast, let's go over to Storm Team meteorologist Lisa Green. The answer is yes, of course, but we'll see it sooner rather than later, too, in the Valley. Some of us tomorrow, and there may be, or all of us tomorrow, but there may be some of us that see it today. We'll talk about that coming up here. We've got those temperatures that are pretty chilly. We're into the upper 30s to some low 40s. It's 41 degrees in Fargo, 38 in Grand Forks, 40 in Park Rapids, and in Gwinner and Oaks, we're at 41. And here's a look at what we've got going on. Now, the radar is detecting some rain, some moisture in the mid-levels the atmosphere. I've yet to see a report of this coming, reaching the ground, coming down, but still be aware you might have some sprinkles overhead in Devil's Lake and Langdon as this disturbance we've been talking about all morning moves through. So we're going to keep an eye on this area uh, right here and up toward Candu and Rock Lake and down through Carrington. Should be kind of weakening, falling apart as it works its way eastward as well. And then once that moves on, we'll start to see some clearing. So by the end of the day today, we may start to see some sunshine in our western viewing area. If you're along the Red River east of there, more likely being stuck in the clouds for most of the day, but we do start to see some clearing tonight. You can see that at the end of our hourly planner here, and uh, we'll continue that trend into tomorrow. So we'll talk more about that sunshine returning and this general drying trend we have setting up for us too, coming up in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Thank you, Lisa. A Minnesota family is breathing a sigh of relief after searchers found a missing six-year-old boy. About 600 people stepped up to help police search into the night for the child who hadn't been seen since after school yesterday in the central Minnesota town of Becker, which is north southeast rather of St. Cloud. Ethan House got off his school bus with his siblings around four in the afternoon, ran off to play with the family dog and then couldn't be found. The Sherburne County Sheriff's Office says the child and his dog were found at about 2 this morning in a cornfield a mile and a half from his home. Now, he was found by a volunteer using a drone. Ethan was taken to the hospital to be checked out. Meanwhile, police are still looking for help finding this Moorhead runaway who has been gone from home for three weeks. They believe 13-year-old Joshua Newmayer is still in the Fargo-Moorhead area. He's about 5'7", 100 to 120 pounds. Brown hair, brown eyes. Call police if you know anything about where he could be. Now more on that police shooting in Texas that left a woman dead in her own home. The arrest warrant for the officer who was involved reveals more about the moments right before that fatal shot was fired. Gabe Gutierrez is in Fort Worth with the latest. We are safe. We don't feel safe. I will feel safe. Overnight, emotions boiling over at a Fort Worth City Council meeting. We are not safe in Fort Worth. As we learn more details about the shooting death of a Tatiana Jefferson. Aaron Dean. Former officer Aaron Dean is out on $200,000 bail after being charged with her murder. His attorney tells NBC News Dean is sorry and that his family is in shock. Jefferson's family says she'd been playing video games with her eight-year-old nephew in the back room of her home early Saturday morning. She was like second mom, you know what I mean? When you see her, you see him. And most people thought that he was 
hers. A newly released arrest warrant says the boy told investigators Jefferson took her handgun from her purse and pointed it toward the window after hearing suspicious noises outside. And that Dean never identified himself as a police officer when he went to the house and into the backyard in response to a neighbor's call to police saying the front door was open. As seen on this body cam video, the 34-year-old cop opened fire within seconds of drawing his weapon. Put your hands up. Show me your hands. Police say Jefferson had every right to protect herself with a gun inside her home and that Officer Dean did not follow proper procedures. Chief, what needs to change at the Fort Worth Police Department? We're looking at bringing in an independent third party uh, uh, group to come in and evaluate our policies. Interim Police Chief Ed Krause choked back tears Tuesday, saying there was absolutely no excuse for what happened. It's very emotional because the officers, they try hard every day to try to make this city better. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Fort Worth, Texas. Jefferson's family members want police to release the video from the second officer at that scene. This case will now go to the district attorney's office and likely to a grand jury. Two more people died in Minnesota from a vaping-related injury. The Minnesota Department of Health reported the first vaping-related death on September 6. The two latest deaths involve people over the age of 50. Both died in September following complications and hospitalizations. The patients developed difficulty breathing. Investigators determined the first patient vaped a number of products, including illegal THC. The second patient had severe underlying conditions and is believed to have vaped unknown products in addition to nicotine. In our consumer alert this afternoon, four in ten Americans say they are not ready for a recession. A new survey from Bankrate.com uh, out this morning finds that four in ten are not prepared if that recession hits in the next six to 12 months. This includes roughly 41 million who say they are not prepared at all. And despite recession fears, nearly one third say they're not doing anything at all to prepare for an economic downturn. Meanwhile, for those who are preparing for the next recession, some are actively spending less money or saving money for emergencies or paying down their credit card debt.